four interceptions are, you know, just part of his problem. We're going to see in a moment the other part of his problem. Is what the quarterbacks get paid so much for. Gregory hitting him pretty good. And Gregory, of course, led the... Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Great Iron. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you could maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video. It would mean so much to me. But just at least anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. <coughs> well. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, for the most part, you, you knew it was going to be ugly. I mean, it, somehow, if some miracle came and the Giants won, it, it, it was going to be ugly. I mean, regardless. I mean... It, if they were going to lose, you know, they were, it was going to be ugly. Uh, I mean, they were going to get outplayed, and they were just, the offense was going to look horrible. Or if they somehow they won, it was just going to be winning ugly. So, I mean, the, there was no, the, no matter how you slice it, this game was not going to be pretty. Um, but you got to give, I mean, one thing you got to give the, the Bears a lot of credit is that, you know, they're trying to get Justin Fields going. <coughs> Now, he had his injury with his ankle. But behind him, right, <clears throat> you got Andy Dalton and you got Nick Foles. I mean, you got two decent, very decent backup quarterbacks. Two guys who can complete passes and who can, um, you, know, you know, take charge of the offense. I mean, Giants just don't have that. I mean... You know, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, he was the Glenn was the quarterback. You had a bunch of backup wide receivers from the practice squad on there. You know, I mean, it, it was going to be a horrible game. Um, this is their fifth, as the fifth double digit loss in a row. Um, the defense did a nice job. You know, the Bears only had two hundred and forty nine yards of total offense. The D, uh, you know, got a couple sacks. They had two interceptions. Uh, Saquon had a very nice day. 102 yards rushing on 21 carries. Once again, you know, we did a nice job with the you know, penalties. <laughs> there ain't much, to, ain't much to be positive about, but the penalties, we only had three penalties for 26 yards. You know, so. Um, and with the, you know, no passing game, we managed, somehow we managed to get 161 yard, rushing yards on 40 carries. So that's pretty darn gone good. Um, you know, uh, the uh, Lorenzo Carter, you know, he, yeah. Uh, Jalen Smith got a sack. All right, cool, 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 cool. I'm very, very happy for him. Lorenzo Carter is the third third game in a row with a sack. Where was this guy at in the beginning of the season? That's, where was he at? He's had four sacks in the past three games. What, what's all of a sudden was just getting sacks? Be interesting to see how many sacks he gets against the Washington football team because he's trying to, he knows he's not going to get resigned, so he's trying to, uh, fill out his resume. Look what I did last year. Last four or five games, I got all these sacks. Look, look at me. Uh, give me, give me, give me fifteen million a year. But uh, I was just kind of wondering where Lorenzo Carter was at in the beginning of the season. Anyway, but I mean, mo you know, we it was a couple of nice things. But I mean, for the most part, once again, my guy, Mike Lennon. I know, I know we had, a, we had the bad old line, you know, uh, Price wasn't there. You know, we had a bunch of backup wide receivers, you know, from the practice squad on there, but four completions. I mean, it, it wasn't like he got benched or not. I mean, four completions the whole game, four turnovers. <laughs> yeah, he had as many turnovers as he did completions. He had four fumbles. He had two interceptions, four of the fumbles, two of them we recovered. But, I mean, it was four for 11 passing, minus 10 yards passing, point, a minus .7 yards per pass attempt. I mean, that is tough to do. Tough to do. Our yards per play was 2.7. I mean, you should be averaging at least six or seven. We had 2.7 yards per play. Oh my God! We were one for eleven on third downs. We were we didn't even get to the red zone. We didn't even sniff the red zone. Yeah. 
we were 0 for 1 on fourth down. So between third and fourth downs, we were 1 for 12. Had 151 yards of total offense, 161 rushing, and minus 10 passing. This is the 11th game in a row where we have under 320 yards of total offense. Three out of the last five games, we haven't had a touchdown. Six, we've had six touchdowns in the last seven games. Now, I'm sorry, but, you know, a good, a good coach, you don't have to be a Hall of Famer. You know, I'm not looking at Vince Lombardi or Bill Belichick here or Bill Parcells or something like that. But a good coach right, will, will, will come up with, 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 with some type of game plan, right? Because, you, you know, Bill Parce if Bill Belichick had this offense, I can almost guarantee you they'd, they'd score touchdowns, a couple touchdowns. I can almost guarantee you. They put up 50 points on Jacksonville. But, you know, I mean, if you had a backup quarterback in there and with these back, with these wide receivers, he, he'd come up with some type of game plan, I guarantee you. They'd score a couple they'd score a couple touchdowns. A couple touchdowns. I mean, bad, bad, sad, sad coaching. Um, you know, I mean, the, you know, Patrick Graham had the defense, did, did a decent job. Like, basically, we gave up uh, two drives. They had a field goal at the end of the first half, and and, they, and and then in the third quarter, they marched down the field and scored a touchdown. The last touchdown they scored. So basically, the Bears had uh, got, got 10 points. We pretty much gave them the rest. Farrow Cooper, I mean, uh, what, what, what is he doing on, on, that, on that kick? I mean, he was decisive. I like it because the ball was up in the air, and he was, uh, he was like walking. He went, and he's like, you know, I mean, bam! I'm not returning this one, ref. We're gonna, we're gonna take this one at the 25, brother. I mean, dude, do you realize the ball bounced at the two or the two or the three? I mean, are you that freaking stupid? But once again, good coaching would have avoided something like that. You don't see a Bill Belichick team do something like that. I mean, you know, you, you, you stand there, you know, you, you, I mean, it's not like, you know, Friday night under the lights, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not there to try to get the, you know, you're not Antonio Brown trying to get attention drawn to you. I mean, because that's all that freaking clown does. But, I mean, you know, you're there for a reason. You make sure the, you're on the goal line. You make sure the ball carries into the end. You, know, you just don't, ah, yeah, we got this. You know, you just start walking away. What are you, stupid? But I'm saying, once again, good coaching would have avoided something like that without question. We got sacked four times at a 15 drop act. Actually, it was like March 16. Because... Um, one of one of the the dropbacks, um, Mike Glennon ran, took off, and I think I got, I got like 13 yards rushing. Nice, but um, yeah, you thought Daniel Jones was bad with turnovers, huh? How about how about two interceptions and four fumbles in one game? Hmm? That's well, we only had it was only the four turnovers because two of them uh, we we recovered, but. If Daniel Jones fumbled the ball four times and had two interceptions in one game, you know how bad we, we would be crucifying the guy? So, <laughs> so I'm basically on 16 dropbacks. Mike Lennon ran the ball one time, so that leaves 15 dropbacks. On those 15 dropbacks, we got sacked four times. We, f we fumbled the ball four times, one, two, three, four, and we had two interceptions. Boink, boink. So out of 15 dropbacks that, that, you know, Mike Lennon didn't run, you know, it was 15 dropbacks. We had 10 bad things happen to us out of 15 dropbacks. Four sacks. <laughs> unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Two interceptions, four fumbles. Um, Mike Lennon's quarterback rating was a 5.3. I, I'm I, I don't even know how it could even really be that high. I mean, the first play of the game, uh, Gibson, um, we had five wide, we had five blockers, and Glennon. So basically, they sent six guys. So Gibson was not blocked. They had five guys, I think, down with their hands in the end, and then they sent the middle linebacker, too. So it basically was one-on-one -on -one with all the receivers. And, and Gibson came right off the edge. You know, Glennon's like looking like this. Boom! He gets he got nailed. He was like he was in the air. Ball fumbled. They run it, pick it up, running back to like what the one or the two yard line. And they score a touchdown. So basically, we gave him that touchdown. 
Um, but on the play, it looked like, you know, you know, I mean, if, if, they, if they blitz, you know, we, we got it. Somebody's got to cut their route off and all. I mean, it looked like Evan Ingram cut his route off and he was open. But by the time he, you know, I, I don't know if it's just the time was off. Glennon didn't see him. Glennon didn't anticipate. I mean, because it's like, you know, you, you got five wives. If they're sending, and it's one-on-one -on -one all, you know, and they're blitzing, you know you got a hot mouth. So he should have been thinking, you know, right? You know, Evan Ingram's hot out. And Evan Ingram cut his route off, or, you know, he was open. But by the time, you know, I mean, you know, Gibson got to him, he nailed Glenn, and Glenn went, the ball went flying. But, I mean, I don't know if that's just from not practicing enough, not, not, not knowing what each one's supposed to be doing or what. But, I mean, you know, a good quarterback would have known Evan Ingram is cutting his route off. And so, basically, okay, you know, yes, good quarterbacks want him to blitz because they're gonna, they make him pay. Hey, yeah, go ahead, blitz. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to eat you freaking alive. I'm going to eat you for freaking lunch, uh, lunch, breakfast, and dinner. You know, but as I said, I guess maybe it's just they just don't practice enough or what. I don't know. But, I mean, Evan Ingram was, cut his route off. Looked like he was, he was open. He was open by a couple yards. So, I mean, a good quarterback would have known that. You know, that you put it tonight. There you go. And it wasn't like, as I said, it wasn't like everything was like maybe five, six yards down the field. I mean, not a far throw. He was, he was open, too. But I don't know, you know. So, basically, 18 seconds into the game, we gave up a touchdown. Then we had another interception, gave the, the Bears the ball, I think, like our, our own 24. That led to another touchdown. So there's basically 14 points that the Bears had within the first eight minutes of the game or something like that. 14 nothing, And, um, you know, basically, basically the kind of the game was over. But there's 14 points that we gave them off of two turnovers. I mean, the Bears earned the turnovers, but, you know, if we don't have the turnovers, the Bears don't have those 14 points. Then, of course, then we had the, the Giants. This this time they gave up three scores in the final two minutes of the first half. We've been outscored 76 to nothing in the final two minutes of the first half. The Bears kicked the field goal. Farrell Cooper screw, screwed up, wound up causing us a safety. Then we punted the ball back to him, and they marched down the field, and they kicked another field goal. Um, so basically, we so in the final two minutes of the first half, during the season, we've given up scores in 12 out of 16 games. We've given up eight touchdowns, one safety, and six field goals in the final two minutes of the first half this season. 76 to nothing we've been outscoring. Unbelievable. Ab Absolutely unbelievable. Bears had one drive that led to a touchdown. That was the, um, the, the touchdown. Um, the, in, it was in the third quarter, their final touchdown. At a t at a drive. Then they also had their, 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 their one uh, drive. They kicked their first field goal. Other than that, I mean, we punted from the 20. I mean, Farrah Cooper, you know, catches the ball and gets it out to the 20, 25, saying we get a few yards. Now we're punting the ball. And plus, not only that, but we're, we're churning up the clock. The, the, the Bears don't have enough time to get down the field to kick another field goal. And if Farrah Cooper catches the ball and gets it out of 20, 25, we don't get a safety. So there's two points for the safety, three points for the field, second field goal, then you, then the, then the turnovers. So basically, the, you know, the Bears earned, you know, drove down the field and got themselves ten points. We scored three. So basically, it was like ten to three. All we needed is one one. You know, I know it's it's a weird way. Of, you know, I mean, I, I know it's it is what it is. We got killed and all that. But I'm saying, but basically, without the turnovers and the stupid Farrell Cooper and all of that. The Bears beat us 10 to 3. All we needed would have been like one touchdown. But um, now the, the Giants had minus 10 yards passing. Now, so you got to go back, all right? Um, 1979 against Tampa Bay, Phil Sims was the quarterback. We had 18 yards passing. But even with 18 yards passing, the, we still won the football game. Somehow, with 18 yards passing in 1979, Phil Simpson, we scored two touchdowns, and we beat Tampa Bay 17-14. to 14. In 1978, Randy Dean, oh yeah, <laughs> he was the quarterback. And against St. Louis, we had 24 yards passing. 
and we wound up scoring two touchdowns, and we won that game, 17 to nothing. 1977, Joe Pisarczyk was the quarterback against Dallas. Dallas won the Super Bowl that year. Dallas was very, very good. But Joe Pisarczyk, we had two yards passing. We didn't win the game, but we scored a touchdown. We lost 24 to 10. But in all three of those games, the one we had 18 yards, we had 24 yards and two yards, we scored at least one touchdown. Now, without those stupid Farrow Cooper with the... the Screwing up the the the, the kickoff and the, those two the, the the two turnovers that led to touchdowns, you know the Bears basically on their own scored ten points driving the ball down the field and we got three. All these other games you know, I'm, that I'm talking about in the seventies where he had low passing yards, you know we scored at least one touchdown. And and back then you know we didn't have great running backs. We have Saquon Barkley now. All right, back then we had Hammond, we had Dan Dornick, we had uh, Bell, we had Watkins. I mean, we had Doug Kotar, we had Larry Zonka, I mean, you know, I mean, Billy Taylor, I mean, well, he wasn't too bad, but none of those guys was Saquon Barkley. And somehow, with all those running backs that just rattled off there, we still managed to score one or two touchdowns. Here we have the, 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 the finest athletic running back of all time for the Giants, and we can't even score a touchdown. Absolutely, unbelievably freaking pathetic. You know, they were talking about the... Um, you got to go back till 1998 with Ryan Leaf when the um, the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Diego Chargers uh, went off faced each other. Ryan, it was Ryan Leaf. They, they had minus 19 yards passing, so our our minus 10 isn't the worst of all time. You got always. But you also have to go back and check. You got to go back to um, 1939 with the Giants. I was just looking online with Pro Football Reference. 1939. We had a game against Washington. We had minus three yards passing. That's 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 the only other time that I could find. Because before, like 1936 and 35, the records and all that get very sporadic. Some games they have records for, some they don't. You got some. You go to like to 1933 and four and all that, and they don't even have records for, for you know for the stats for the games and stuff like that. How many passing yards, rushing yards? But I went back to 1939. We were one out of six. We had, there was no sacks. We completed one pass, and we lost three yards on it. So that's the only other game in Giants history that I could find that we actually came up with a negative yardage, uh, negative number for passing yards, minus three in 1939. So you go back 61, 81, 82 years ago before we actually had a game, 82 years ago before we had a game where the Giants wound up with minus uh, passing yards. So, that was quite a feat that we had today. Good old Mike Lennon. You got to love him. So, I mean, absolutely unbelievably pathetic. But, I remember listening to this game, and this is why it stuck out to me, on the radio. 1979, the Rams went into Seattle and played the Seahawks. So, don't feel as bad, because it could always be worse. All right? They always say that. 1979, the Rams went into Seattle. The Rams had 29 first downs. Seattle had one first down. Uh, the Rams won 24 to nothing. Seattle had 23 rushing yards. They had minus 30 passing yards. They had minus seven, minus seven total yards. Okay, the Rams had 475 yards of offense. The that Seattle had minus seven. It was a 482-yard difference in, in offense. 475 to minus seven. Right? Jim Zorn, poor Jim Zorn, he was two out of 17 that day with his, with his sacks and all that and everything. He had minus 30 passing yards. So I remember listening to that to on the radio in 1979, and I was trying to like picture how bad it was because it wasn't on TV, but I was trying to listen to it. and Wow. So as bad as it was with the Giants, it could always be worse. And you know what, guys? Thank goodness we only have one more game left in this horrible, horrible season. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there. And go Giants! Woo!